The war in Israel leading to a rise in attacks on U.S. troops by Iran-backed terrorist groups, including two attacks on U.S. bases in just the last 24 hours. And get this, the Queen of Jordan now says the West, not Hamas, is complicit in the deaths of Palestinians. Listen to this. I think the people all around uh, the Middle East, including in Jordan, we are just shocked and disappointed by the world's reaction to this catastrophe that is unfolding. In the last couple of weeks, we have seen you know, a glaring double standard uh, in the world. The silence is deafening, and to many in our region, it makes the Western world complicit, you know, um, through their support and through the cover that they give Israel, that it is just, uh, it's right to defend itself. Here now, townhall.com editor and Fox News contributor Katie Pavlich. There's a lot to discuss in what Rania said. Katie, have at it. Well, this was a 20-minute interview in which the Queen of Jordan decided to go on a screed devoid of facts and full of smears against Israel and against the West. First of all, let's start with the fact that she is a queen. She doesn't live in a country where they're elected. She gets to rule over a number of Palestinians. She is of Palestinian descent. But her royal family is actually Hashemite, and they rule as minority over Palestinians in her country. Uh, she went through this interview and complained about the fact that Palestinian terrorists, Hamas, were classified as terrorists. She denied the atrocities of Hamas going into Israeli civilian homes and taking their babies and slaughtering them, beheading them, shooting them, burning them alive. She said that wasn't independently verified, even though it's been verified by U.S. intelligence, Israeli intelligence, and hundreds of journalists who have seen the video and the photos firsthand. This is a woman who takes advantage of everything afforded to her in the Western context of being a woman. The clothes that she wears, speaking in the way that she did on CNN, the way she travels and gallivants around the world with celebrities and other world leaders, and yet she has the nerve now to turn around and say the West is complicit after the United States government, the American taxpayer, gives her country $3 billion a year to sustain her lifestyle and to put her up on a pedestal. Um, it is amazing that she went and continued to talk about this. She ignored the fact that Palestinians living in Jordan have four times less the income than Israeli Palestinians living in Israel as citizens. So she went on this screed. She talked about these things that are not true. And yet uh, she's saying there's a double standard with the media. Um, last time I checked, the New York Times was on the side of Hamas, as is Al Jazeera, who is continuing to incite people in the Arab world against Americans, against U.S. troops, and against Israelis, who are a true ally of the United States and the West. So, Katie, it seems that the Queen is emboldened, and many are emboldened, uh, to uh, speak on truth about what actually happened here, but also um, to blame the West uh, for what's happening. And I wonder if the root cause of that is Joe Biden is viewed globally as a weak president. His policies are weak. He's an appeaser. And when you appease people, it seems like this is the kind of response that you get. You get blamed as opposed to the true aggressors. Well, certainly the appeasement of Iran has led to what we're seeing now in the region. As you open the segment, a number of attacks that continue today have been launched on U.S. forces in the region. There hasn't yet been a response. The Biden administration just greenlit a visa for the Iranian foreign minister to go to the U.N. and to threaten the United States of America on the global stage if we don't do what they want in terms of hostages. They threaten to transfer hostages from Hamas to Iran if they don't get their way. And let's not forget when the White House says that, well, we just have to issue these visas because the U.N. is a place for diplomacy, President Trump refused with Secretary Pompeo to issue a visa to right. the former foreign minister in 2020 as a result of their deterrence policy. And you weren't seeing these attacks, not just on U.S. troops, but, of course, on our friends in the Middle East. And so the appeasement certainly is leading to a number of long-term alliances fraying at the edges. Uh, Egypt, Jordan, uh, Saudi Arabia was on the path to have war normalization, and here we are now uh, with things falling apart and things at the brink. They're not, a, they're not afraid of the United States. No longer afraid. Katie Pavlich, always a pleasure. Good to Thank see you. you. Thank Katie. you, Katie. Indeed.